Hi there, Nigel Saunders here. You might notice that I've got two new trees surrounding me here. One is mine and one is for auction. Here's a look at the first tree. This is a tiger bark ficus and it was purchased by the Toronto Bonsai Society for a demonstration on tropical trees. And I did the initial styling on it, reducing it from a very tall tree down to a more compact tree. And that was in January of 2020, so quite a while ago. And the tree in the meantime has been repotted once and it's really filled in up top and it's starting to look quite nice. This tree will be auctioned off to the Toronto Bonsai Society members at this year's meeting in December. So my goal is to get the tree all cleaned up and looking really good. Let's go back in time now, almost two years ago, and I'll show you what the tree looked like initially and what it looked like after the first styling. And now you can see what it looks like after growing for almost two years. I'm at the Toronto Bonsai Society's meeting. This is the ficus I'm going to be styling tonight. I did one year, um, I got it from Chris at uh, Two Fall, Two Springs, Two Fall. Yeah, So we'll check in and see what it looks like after. Here's the after. I did all the work on the ficus. There's even a little bit of wiring on it. Very unusual for me. Quite a change to the tiger bark ficus. It's really matured in the last two years and really filled in. It's looking good. I won't be working on this tree in this video. I'll be doing a separate video where I just concentrate on this tiger bark ficus, making it look as good as it can. I'll move the tree into a nice sunny spot until I'm ready to do the work on it. The other new tree I have here is a European buckthorn, a very large one. This was collected off private land. These are considered an invasive species in North America and you shouldn't propagate them. If you do let the tree get the little berries on it, you should pick them all off before they ripen so the birds don't reseed them elsewhere because it creates a lot of havoc on our native forest systems and the wildlife. Here's a look at the buckthorn and as you can see it's, it's quite large but it's also very well developed. I'll rotate it around so you can see it from all angles. So I don't know where the front will be. I would think somewhere in the direction you're looking now maybe. I think it has the nicest trunk line but we'll see. So yeah quite a large mature and well developed tree. Zinn, Connor and I went on a road trip yesterday and we were given several of these buckthorn trees. Zinn has two of them and I think I have two maybe three I'm not sure. We couldn't fit them all in my car so I've got some at Zinn's that I'll have to pick up at another time. But uh, yeah, they're quite well developed as bonsai and the former owner wasn't happy with them uh, getting a lot of branch die back. And I don't know what they're like to grow as bonsai. Um, I have a small one in my front garden and it's not very reliable. Uh, you prune a branch back and sometimes instead of it, you know, getting more ramification on that branch, that branch just dies back and then it sprouts a new one from the trunk of the tree. So I think they're quite a difficult species to train as a bonsai. Uh, I think you kind of have to go with the flow of the tree. Uh, it's kind of in charge, I believe, of the styling and you've kind of just got to guide it, gently guide it in the right direction. And I think that's about all you can do. So if you're after like a formal structure to the tree or you know you want a branch there and you want that branch to be really developed I don't know if this is the tree to do that with it's not like a maple that's fairly reliable so it'll be a challenge I'm sure uh, the first step is to restore this tree to really good health uh, it was lying in a compost heap uh, so it wasn't in the best of health when we picked them up but uh, I think they'll live. 
they they look healthy enough that uh, I think they'll do fine. My first step will be to get it out of this grape box and into a pot uh, where it can recover and gain health, and then I'll put it in full sun. I have this concrete pot that Lewis from the bonsai at the Royal Botanical Gardens made, and I think it's the perfect size for this tree. It's even a really nice color. I think it'll match the trunk color quite well on this tree. So my first step is to get it into this pot. I think I've got to get the health and vigor of this tree restored. So I'll do that. I'll place it in a nice sunny spot. I'll water and fertilize it carefully, get it through this fall, protect it well in the winter, and then in spring I'll continue to take good care of it so the tree gains vigor, gains health, and then once it's you know full of leaves and really healthy looking, then I can begin the styling work on it. Some pruning and deciding what branches to keep, what's the front, and all that kind of good stuff. While I'm getting the pot ready to plant the European buckthorn, I'll show you some clips from Connor's place. We uh, kind of filled the cards on the camera last time we were doing the bench tour at Connor's. So we just had a little bit left. So we finished the bench tour yesterday. It is early in the morning and I'm heading off to see Zinn and Connor today. It looks like a really nice day today. Nice and cool. All right, we'll be taking the micro today. So off I go. Someone wants to play. <laughs> well, I'm here at Connor's. Hey, hey Ron, Connor. how's it going? How's it going? Good, good. So we never did finish the bench tour at Connor's. We filled the cart on the camera. So we're gonna <laughs> go over and do the last few trees on his bench. It gets pretty yellow or green You wanna play? You wanna play tug of war, do you? Yeah, you like tug of war, don't you? Hey, you like tug of war. <laughs> You're gonna be on YouTube, you know that. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be on YouTube. I finally got a uh, brass uh, nozzle for my hose. Oh, that's, where did you get that from? I, uh, my uh, uh, girlfriend's sister was in Ireland for a little bit, so, yeah. so it was right from England, actually. Is it made by Haas? Or? Yeah, yeah, so you can see here. Because uh, I've been Haas looking Genuine. for, a, oh yeah, it says Haas on it. Haas Genuine. I've been looking for one of those. So yeah, so this is the one with the small holes, right? Uh, big holes. Oh, the big holes. Okay. Yeah, but there's more of them, so I think it's. Much oh, that smoother. works really nice, doesn't yeah. it? Wow. And then check out the other one. That's good. So this one isn't a genuine hot. No, it is as well. Oh, it is. Okay. Uh, it's oh just, yeah. Like this one is their fine, and this one is the extra fine. Oh, okay. But I think the fine one works a little better. Okay. So like, this Let's is the. See, yeah. It gets oh, clogged yeah. really easy. It's just easy. a little finer, but gets yeah. clogged easy. And I don't, I don't have a full barrel. It's better with more pressure. Right, right. right. Yeah. So you got the big four liter. Is that four liters? Uh, yeah, five. Or five liters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have one of those at home too. <laughs> Where'd you get yours from? Um, this was from Lee Valley, I think. Yeah, okay. It was from Lee Valley. Oh, I didn't know they sold the big one. Yeah, I think they've oh. started. They've discontinued <laughs> most of their hot <laughs> stuff. I'm pulling her, <laughs> pulling on the ring. <laughs> that's why the camera's probably jerky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's good. Awesome, Connor. I didn't know you could get replacements for those. Yeah, they're they're hard to find here because they won't ship to to Canada from the UK. Okay. okay. So you kind of need to know someone. <laughs> you gotta know someone. Yeah. In the know, eh? Yeah, okay. yeah. Hey everyone, back to the benches. Uh, so we'll just finish up the last couple trees here. Uh, this is not a tree. This is a uh, a vine. A Virginia creeper. Uh, wow, that's kind of cool. upright and on it, eh? yeah, that It'll is cool. Kind of be cool, maybe like a windswept or like a definitely a semi cascade of, of some. And they kind. get nice fall colors. Don't yeah, they? just around the corner, I think. Kind of deep red. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. But growing really strong. That uh, is awesome, Connor. And where'd you get that from? Um, I think a uh, nursery stock. Okay. Uh, Brussels nursery, I think. Wow, I'm surprised they sell one with a trunk like that on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're mostly like a lot of whips. Yeah. Um, oh, that's cool. Decided there's a burning bush. Yeah. I think we ended up somewhere here, so. Okay. Um, we were talking about maybe uh, this spruce and birch combination. Yeah. I have a little mugle pine. Oh, it's rooted in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's come down and yeah. look at it. 
but oh it's, yeah uh, a little tiny one twisty mm -hmm. nice yeah it was from home and then you guys have seen this before i'll pull this out that's your time right yeah variegated time mm -hmm. wow you've had that a long time haven't you yeah yeah it's it's really nice it came from a little pot uh but you can see i kind of cut it really hard and, and shallow oh yeah and uh just a ton of a ton of smells growth. nice yeah Oh, I always keep good. it, so we always have a, a cupboard full of time. Yeah. But uh, mo the moss is just really luscious. I'm, I'm you had that in the bonsai. KW show at one time, I think. Yeah. Long, long ago when you yeah. first got into bonsai. That is so cool. Yeah, so it's nice, uh, really wide canopy on that. Moss is looking good, isn't it? Yeah, overflowing. Over, yeah. <laughs> Spilling over the edge. Um, this is my big uh, jade. I think it's just the regular kind of jade. Wow, is that ever... Uh, that is quite the trunk, eh? Mm -hmm. There's my hand for size. Yeah, so this was one of the first uh, trees I brought into the club. And uh, Nigel, we made the... There's some big hard cuts here. Right, yeah. Um, so that was three, four years ago. So this is, these are the new branches and then cut, cut and repeat, basically. And you were saying this pot is from... Uh, yeah, he is a potter in, in France. Yeah. Um, I forget the exact name, but by the time I get to the comments, I'll put, I'll put it in there. Yeah. Uh, but he's on Facebook and he has some really nice, uh, cool pots. That really suits the jade, doesn't mm -hmm. it? It's just amazing. Wow. Yeah, so it looked really good. I think, um, like the old leaves are, are pretty big and stuff, but the new ones are coming up. So I think it's maybe time to cut off the big leaves. Yeah. And uh, I think it'd look good for a nice shot. Uh, just developing more and more ramification at yeah. this point. That's really cool. It's looking good. Really thick, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So what did you think when we first did those cuts? <laughs> did you think that was a little severe? Or? It, yeah, it was, it was tough, especially because there was no, no leaves yet. <laughs> left, and that's a, a big first step to do. Yeah. But I think the uh, my favorite part about Bonza is when these come back in. Yeah. So I'll show you one of my old, uh, and show everyone an old ficus over there that I had to completely defoliate. Okay. Uh, so I think last, when we were here, it was still full. So we can show it. Uh, okay, that'd be everyone. cool to see. And it's just starting to pop out. But I think yeah. that's my favorite part. Uh, awesome. Beside it, we have a, a small little wild apple. Oh, that's nice, eh? That uh, has some cool roots and a, a nice base. And it's just... Do you think it's a crab wild. apple or? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I forget exactly what kind of crab apple, but I've, I've mistaken it as a pin cherry. Okay. But I think it's an apple. Okay. Um, but it gets a really small uh, cherry-like cluster of, of red flowers. That is cool. That is uh, really no, sorry, cool. red fruit and white flowers. Red fruit, white flowers. Yeah. Um, some other stuff creeping in here. This is the same grass uh, from David. Oh yeah. It's yeah. Doing really well. Uh, I have a, a lamb's ear. Yeah. Which I'm gonna try for kusamono. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a kind of, I forget the exact species, but it's a, it's an alpine willow. Oh, okay. And it has really nice flowers. It's all done flowering now. Um, but we can, there's a, there is a snaky kind of cool trunk in there somewhere. Oh yeah. 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 So that's a project for next year. Wow. A little bonsai, eh? Yeah. That yeah, cool. I think so. Um, did, did we talk about your birch forest? Yeah, here? I think so. We did. Okay. Yeah, but it's it's that's the mixed forest here, right? The spruce and birch. Yeah, yeah. So uh, nice it, small leaves. Yeah, they it. cut back well on them, but uh, I didn't keep up with it over. Right. So, so I'm just these are just runners. Once the leaves fall, you can prune it in here. Um, or is, I found uh, I don't know, you know the birch dieback. Yeah, they're known for it. I so I've I've had really good success with only pruning after the first flush. Okay. So you um, let it flush out. Yeah, and, prune and then I prune it. So, uh, so I think the birch are in like a in like the energy negative state for a long time. I see uh, through the winter and and uh, stuff. So I found that a safe period. So I'm, I'm hesitant to go outside of that. So you like to keep some leaves to cut back too on it? Is that yeah, yeah. The so um, like so if I was going to cut uh, this this branch, yeah, and if I wanted to bring it really down, I could bring it down to these these buds, yeah. Um, but you can see here, this is where I'd, I'd prune, yeah. and then uh, more buds would spread, or then I'd prune. It, it's tough. You know, I'm not getting exact like bifurcation every time. No, no, but you get some yeah. slowly builds. Yeah, up. but like the leaf size here, yeah, compared to down here, is much yeah. much different. As it right? gains vigor, they get bigger, don't they? Yeah. Very cool. Very yeah, cool. really excited to get that going. Yeah. 
this is a little uh, Korean hornbeam. Oh yeah. Uh, with some nice low branches. Oh, nice, nice trunk on it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just growing. I'm probably gonna up pot it next uh, next spring. Yeah. Really try to grow the and thicken out the trunk. Get a nice little pot for it. Yeah. Yeah. This or is fun. Uh, uh, this is a, uh, a hackberry. Okay. Uh, native hackberry. I, it's Occidentalis, a Celtis Occidentalis, maybe. Okay. Um, but it's it's kind of a whimsical and tall. Yeah. And uh, there's a little bird here that uh, sprouted <laughs> out. Oh, by uh, itself. <laughs> oh, yeah, I get them all over the place. But this is, I guess, a uh, was I think a coco cocodama. Okay. Like a moss ball. Yeah. I just grow it on the top of a, a foliar's uh, coffee pot. Yeah. But you'd show it without uh, anything in the bottom. Wow. So nice. The moss is really so uh, stable. Just grow yeah. in the moss. They like growing in the moss, don't they? Mm -hmm. That's what I found. Yeah, yeah, and it's coming out the bottom there. Yeah, it's doing really well. I haven't had to repot it yet, so we'll cross that bridge when I get there. I guess. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah. I guess you just kind of wire it to the base, maybe, and then put the moss around and till it regrows into the uh, roots. Yeah. Into the moss. I I've seen the you, you could try to get like a sheet yeah. of moss, so you try to like pull it off a rock, get as much as possible, and then you kind of like wrap it around. Okay. Um, with either some like thread or some raffia that will like eventually decompose and they'll just hold the, the ball together. Okay, that's a good idea. Cool. Um, beside them I have uh, my collection of, uh, oh, I'm gonna get this wrong. Um, I think they're either Hokkaido elms. Yeah, they're Ho Hokkaido elms. Right, yeah. Um, so these are all from nursery stock, which is pretty, uh, pretty fantastic. Yeah. Um, they're all kind of, you can see they, or at least the ones I have, they're these like almost clumpy style. Yeah. So, I don't know, I'm, I'm uh, there's the front of that one. This is the yeah. nicest one. Really cool. Uh, but you can see they grow in this really, like I didn't have to do too much work. This is my most advanced one. Yeah. But it only has like three prunings under it, it's belt. Right, so uh, they're slow growing, are they? Yeah, well slow growing, but also they, they've, they form this kind of natural canopy really easily. Like I've only pruned this one time from, from nursery stock. So they don't tend to grow vertical. They're more kind of Yeah. So you can see horizontal um, growth. Yeah. So if we zoom in here, they, they put out shoots like this. Okay. And, uh, it kind of, it's really cool. It looks almost fractal when, uh, you get it. Yeah. But so when they, you, yeah. So they keep subdividing and yeah. And then, so you can see there's really, really tiny buds. These are the smallest elm leaves I think in existence. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> But if I was like a prune, I'll just prune, or maybe I'll just pinch this one, for example. Yeah. Uh, and then you'll get two buds coming out from the side. I see. And how much would it grow per year? Like about a centimeter? Or? Um. Yeah. This is this is this year's growth, pretty much. Okay. So yeah, a little over a centimeter. Yeah. Okay. Um. Quite vigorous. You can. They also like are notorious for putting out buds along the trunk. So these are all bud sites. I see. So you have to rub them off. I'm hoping the bark will eventually encroach. Uh, but you can see it on the mature one more here. So they'll get bushy really quickly if you don't touch yeah, them. Yeah, right? yeah. So I'm constantly rubbing the the the, the trunks and branches yeah. down to avoid that because uh, yeah. Once you get, I think once you get a lot of this, uh, the bark is going to take a long time to go over that, or it may yeah. ever. Yeah. Right. I'm I'm not sure. And then it gets hard to see what's going on if you yeah. get too many branches. I guess. Eh. Mm -hmm. Wow. So Those I have three cool. of them. Yeah. So I may put them in, uh, I'm thinking I may want to do like a really long, big, wide, open oh, yeah. kind of penjing. That would look nice. Yeah, because yeah, this is the smaller one. And they all kind of have the similar form. Yeah. They're all very clumpy. This one has a, is a kind of like a twin trunk. This yeah, one's the, three, this one's three. This one almost looks like a miniature version of the larger one. Exactly, right? It? Yeah, I think so. It's, it's nice to have the three together. Yeah, so you could get some good perspective in your planting. Mm -hmm. That looks really cool, Connor. Thanks, thanks. Uh, behind it is my mixed uh, larch and spruce forest. Larch and spruce forest. This wow. is a dwarf Alberta spruce. Yeah. And uh, uh, American uh, larch. Very cool. So weeds are uh, way overhand, out of hand. Um, is this the back we're looking yeah, at? Yeah. Yeah. This is the back of it, right? Yeah. So most of my trees on, I keep the front to the, the fence. Yes. So you get the light. Yeah. Okay. And I'm not that good at rotating them. I should rotate them. Wow. 
That but is you can cool. see here, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm pushing that? the growth so hard that uh, it split the trunk. Wow. So uh, you can see it here too, there. Oh, it's, yeah. it's splitting. Yeah, yeah. So I'm putting, I'm pumping water and fertilizer, getting a lot of growth. And uh, growing so, fast. Yeah, yeah, so the bark can't really keep up. Yeah. Uh, but this is, uh, I'm going to put the two ones that you guys saw in the other videos. I just pruned them, so maybe we can go back and check those out too. Yeah, yeah. But they're going to go in these kind of open spaces and a uh, bigger That'll bigger look good. Pot. That'll <laughs> look really good. Yeah. If you can get a bigger pot, eh? Yeah, so uh, that's going to be a trip to Chris Hendry's probably. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> um, behind it, uh, this is a nursery stock, uh, a cut leaf, uh, so kind of one of those ge uh, genetic crosses of a lilac. This is a, a oh, lilac. Oh, really? really? Type. That is, I've never seen that before. Mm. That is cool. Yeah, so it'll be a fun project. It's a, a got little, a bit of a, a trunk. Clump. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a nice clump style. Twin in there. trunk or something. And, uh, it's growing pretty strong. It grows fast, yeah. eh? Wow, that's cool. Uh, in front of it, this is a, uh, a seedling of the uh, uh, paper bark maple. Oh, so okay. We saw the bigger wow, one back there. you're lucky to get those, eh? Yeah, well, Hong gave me this, and he said he's. Because they, they don't germinate for stink. Like, they're, no, they're not tried to. really good. But uh, I think it's kind of cool that it has like this long root along the soil yeah so i'll maybe i'll bend it back and have some kind of interesting so did he find form. that as a seedling or um or? no i think so, someone he knew uh, had some success and, and gave a few to hong so he oh. he passed one on to me because we've been talking uh to hong had a couple of these in, uh, back in the day yeah and uh, not too successful with them but he, they have spectacular fall colors right yes and obviously the stunning uh, paper bark so and they stay fairly miniature they're not a yeah so they don't grow into a giant tree do they yeah so people they don't like the trifoliate leaf type so there's technically has three leaves yeah uh but you, even when they're small it's still pretty acceptable yeah so yeah. this one is uh in too wet of a soil so you can see it's very yellowing i see so that's gotta get we gotta get that out of there in, in spring okay um last or a couple last ones here this is a really dwarf uh, hemlock. Oh wow! So, uh, kind of denses pygmy. I see. Eastern hemlock. Eastern hemlock. Uh, so you can see most of it d didn't make it through the winter. Yeah. Uh, but I still have some, so there, there's hope. Yeah. And there's some back. Still alive, and, and you got some deadwood on it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Natural deadwood. Real, real small. Very cool. Uh, speaking of deadwood, this is a uh, a rosemary, uh -huh. which uh, that's a good trunk on that one. Yeah. And then this is just from like a, a convenience store in, in the city. Really? Like one of the ones that have like a lot of plants and, and kind of interesting things in it. Um, oh, it's nice. Yeah, so it was, big, it was much bigger, right? Like uh, I've chucked it down. There's some really big yeah. um, branches here. Uh, but rosemaries are one of the uh, kind of stranger deciduous trees that you can have like dead wood and stuff on them. They have hard, hard right. wood and hard they'll wood, stick yeah. around. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna gin this whole side, yeah, and then grow it as a really uh, strong cascade or semi cascade. Oh, that's great! It's mm -hmm. a good structure to it. Yeah, so that was uh, pruned and repotted in the spring and just been growing all, all summer. Nice, nice, really nice. Uh, last we have here is a, another nursery stock. Uh, this is a unique tree. This is a fringe tree, our Ooh. native uh, fringe tree. Okay, fringe. There it is. Uh, so technically really not native to like this part of, of Canada, but uh, native to uh, like eastern, uh, northeastern United States, uh, like New Jersey and stuff. Yeah. Um, but it produces a really nice uh, fringy flower. Okay. And uh, has nice berries, but it's, uh, I forget the word, I think it's dioecious. Well, you need a male and a, a female see. to produce uh, fruit. Yeah. Uh, and this is a male, or maybe only the females produce fruit. Uh, and then the males produce more flower. I see. Um, but yeah, cool. It's a, it's a really soft bark, uh, but I, I, I was hunting for the trunk, so I picked the, the nicest trunk. Yeah, um, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's probably maybe cut this one. Anyways, I, I haven't really experimented with it because I don't really know the species. So just... Yeah, something to try out, eh? A native tree. Mm -hmm. Very cool, Connor. Well, but we have some updates over <laughs> on the other side of the yeah. benches, right? Yeah, look, an apple has settled down. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Appa. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> just coming by here. Uh, so here we are, this is um, a jack pine. Okay. And I just want to point out that uh, it's, it started to lose uh, last year's uh, needles. Yeah. Or maybe two or three years needles ago. Two, these are last year's needles. So basically what this is telling me is the tree's telling me it's now it's time to needle pluck. 
So right, I can easily right. come in and uh, start cleaning up cleaning all these those. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's it's is a good example of the tree telling you what 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 time. I'm it is. going to be doing that to my Austrian pine soon. Yeah, I'm just waiting till a little. I might as well get the whole growing season, and then once it starts going dormant, I'm going to thin the needles right down to like maybe five per mm -hmm. branch tip. Yeah, and then that'll get light to the branches, so hopefully it'll back bud more. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah, I can't remember, but I think these uh, three are recently pruned. I'm, I'm not sure if the forest yeah, was full. Yeah, I don't full. think I saw these. Like, that looks yeah. fantastic. Yeah, so these are the, the two uh, lead trees of, of the forest that we just saw. The spruce and yeah. the larch, right? Spruce and larch. So, um, wow, they look great. Yeah, I picked. I got a front, and then I did a lot of trimming. Oh, yeah. Um, so I think that is looking really nice. That is. That's... It's got a really, like, the cathedral top. Yeah, it looks like, like an natural. old growth tree, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. And uh, very cool. Like like Nigel mentions on his forces, I just tried to get them as, as tight as, to the trunk as possible. Yeah, yeah. You'll never regret doing that. Car. <laughs> yeah. You can always grow them out wider. Yeah. But... And you got to do it, and you got to keep them that way and ag aggressively prune. Yeah. Because once they get too forest. far, you'll lose you lose the branch. Yeah, especially in a forest, you got to keep them mm -hmm. really tight. Mm -hmm. And this is the larch. Yeah, the the pairing larch. So it 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 has like this one long characteristic branch. Yeah. I haven't decided if I'm gonna keep it or not, but there's some bar branches going on here. So if I get, I'm gonna get rid of one of these. Okay. Uh, in the design. Yeah, you've got a lot in that one area. Yeah. Right? yeah. And I, I've kept it like w both of these kind of have uh, too many branches. Yeah. And that just gives me some more freedom to put them in the forest wherever I kind of want. Yeah, you might arrange them and then decide, mm. although you don't need that branch. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, like if, if this tree ends up going on like the very right side of, of the forest, then this long branch to the outside won't make a lot of sense. Yeah, so you'll decide then what you keep once yeah. it's all planted. Yeah, exactly. That makes sense. Uh, and then lastly down here, um, I wanted to show you guys, I don't think this was pruned either. Here's, here's the willow leaf, it's still struggling to come out, I know, isn't it? I don't know what's going on with that. <laughs> if anyone has any ideas, it just kind of sat dormant all summer. Yeah, that is unusual, isn't it? It's but they're, got they're leaves plump. coming out. They're right? they're plump. They're they're back. Like they're still pushing stuff along the trunk. So yeah. I'm like in here scrubbing it off, but they just won't spread out, or just a small amount. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm I'm spraying it with my soap and water here. I, I'm still leaning towards. I think it's some sort of bug, or maybe something in the roots, or maybe I'm keeping it too wet because there's not a lot of leaves. So I, but I'm, I'm kind of at a loss. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. I would say it's something with the roots that it's just saying I don't push the leaves out yet, because mm -hmm. it's certainly not the weather, is it? It's been fantastic. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, well, so maybe like I, I, your religiosa did that for a couple seasons, it didn't did. it? It just yeah. went backwards. I had some dormancy periods and good weather. Yeah, so maybe when I bring it in the <laughs> indoors, it will pop back up like a spring. Yeah. I don't know. I'm don't, gonna keep it a little drier. I don't think we showed this one, Connor. So this is a. Willow leaf that Connor's yeah. spread out. So. Yeah, it's like an octopus style, I guess. Yeah, so it's <laughs> almost flat to the ground. Yeah. So that'll be really interesting. And actually, there is, you can see the central trunk here. Oh, yeah. Um, and there is actually a trunk. Um, so I I kind of wanted to speed up and make like a really, you know those, uh, I'm going to call them mangrove forests. Yeah. But like the, 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 uh, the ficus forest that put out those aerial roots. Yeah, and it's one tree, but it looks like it's like many forests. Yeah, so that was my goal here So that's why I, I pegged all these uh, Branches to the ground in in hopes to stimulate roots going, going down down and then they'll become aerial roots. Yeah, but like the actual Nabari of the main trunk yeah. is 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 way deep probably deep down here. I see um, That'll look really good. Yeah, and small too. It'll look really yeah really cool. So this thing, this one kind of suffered the same, and uh, it actually is all my willow leaves because the one I gave Zin is, is is like that too. Yeah. But this one, you can see like this side opened up really nice, but still kind of the same problems on yeah. this side. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I'm coming at a loss. Interesting. We'll just yeah. keep them healthy and uh, and keep uh, an eye on them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is what I want to show you guys. I did some uh, severe pruning on my on both oh, my ficus. Yeah. So we'll start this, with this one. This was the thumbnail on the one video. Yeah. Got a lot of views too. Wow, so that got cut back, yeah. Yeah, so um, maybe Nigel, if you could see, put like the before next to this. Um, yeah. But the the branches were really long mm -hmm. and with no uh, movement or, or taper or no branching. So it, it has really nice 
uh, like kind of, I would say primary and secondary branching, but then it's tertiary branching got, grew too much. Yeah. So uh, needed a cut back. Yeah. So basically everywhere I needed to prune, there was no, there was no leaves. Yeah. Um, so you did a hard cut back. Yeah. I, I find you have to do that on ficuses that they just get too whippy mm -hmm. looking. So you got to cut them back hard, regrow all the branches. And yeah. But this is, uh, I was saying over there, I think this is my, my favorite part of bonsai now is after taking off all the leaves and then you, you, you get to see if, if successful, all these nice little green uh, shoots coming out and it's really, really rewarding when they, when they do come out. They look uh, awesome for about a month, don't they? And then yeah. they start getting bushy again. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And yeah. uh, this was, I don't think I, there's a couple, like I'll definitely have some dieback, but I think overall very successful. It looks it really strong. Yeah, it looks really successful, doesn't it? Yeah. And this is a tiger bark ficus, yeah. right? Yeah. Wow, it's looking good, Connor. Thanks, really thanks. nice. And then, uh, well, same the thing Flera. on my rumpy. Oh, okay, the rumpy. Yeah, the, this has changed a lot. Yeah, but, um, so this one's a little slower and I was a little more conservative. So you can see I left, uh, or it had, I, I would say, I guess there was leaves lower back. Yeah. Um, so I could cut back to a leaf. Yeah. Uh, but it's the same thing, same principle. And this one's a little slower, but they are, they're all popping out. Yeah, I can see there's a mm -hmm. bud there and there's buds up here, isn't there? Yeah. I found I cut mine back um, probably a month ago and it's mm -hmm. got all these strong buds on it but nothing's yeah. pushing out yet uh -huh. so maybe it'll wait till I bring it inside when it gets warmth yeah and then it'll push the flusher leaves out I think I got to my religiosa sooner than yours but this is also pushing out new growth oh yeah and look so at that eh I cut this one off that was a big strong leader, yeah. wasn't it? And this is all new in, in the last like month or since the last time you were here. That has really grown since I mm -hmm. gave it to you, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, super vigorous. Looks good, yeah. Really good, Connor. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Everything else over You here. cut your Schaflera back, too. Oh, yeah. That was a big bush when I saw it last time. So here it is here. You can start to see the structure in there. Wow, that's going to look fantastic, Yeah, I'm really eh? excited about this. Wow. Yeah. And that'll be sort of like that mangrove or you know banyan mm -hmm. banyan style yeah aerial roots and multiple trunks and yeah that's looking really good yeah, connor I'm completely inspired by yours and, and, <laughs> and your videos on it uh online i recommend everyone try a project like this it's, it's, it's pretty cool really isn't fun it? and rewarding yeah i like that yeah but it's really starting to get uh like all really radial and yeah yeah it's it's Looking really good. So what is this, Connor? I have n not a clue. Oh, this is that mystery one. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. it was just naked last time I yeah. saw it. Yeah, it's uh, it's some sort of succulent. Um, Look at the flowers. Is mm -hmm. that ever cool? That yeah. It's really nice. And I think it's it's likely getting this purple tinge from the cooler nights. Okay. Um, that's what I would I would think. Is that ever cool? I like that. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, but this is what I want to show you here in the back. Okay. You can see this uh, look little quince flower popping out. If you ever grow a cutting off of that one, I'd take it, Connor. This, of this? Yeah. yeah, for sure. That'd be cool. I'll try. Because uh, it grows like really, really straight. Okay. Um, so I kind of, it has a nice... Uh, Pyramidal shape yeah. kind of thing. Eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, a nice a, pot. Look yeah. at that pot, eh? Yeah, it's from Wayne. It's like bamboo. He made mm -hmm. this? No, no. It was, oh, okay. uh, I think it's a oh, Japanese it pot. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is that ever cool? Mm-hmm. Very nice. But I think uh, I also pr r uh, pruned and reprued this since last time. I think you guys, it was in a big nursery container. Is that a quince? Yeah, it's a Texas scarlet quince. Okay, wow. And you can see from the pruning, it actually sent out some <laughs> late year flowers. Yeah. Which is a little interesting. Amazing. Yeah. Here's Connor's hibiscus. The <laughs> uh, We don't know if it's like fire and ice or snow queen or what the variety is, but it's just cool. It so grows real fast. He's got a fantastic drum. I find most of the hibiscus do. Yeah. That once they roots get established, they just take off. Like that cutting you gave me. Yeah. Well, that's what this is. This is I had started from the same cutting. Okay. Uh, and I think this is three three years from okay. from a cutting that I the same caliber I gave you. Wow. So this is a, your future. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe how fast mine has grown. Like. Yeah. I, I put it in too small a pot in spring, mm -hmm. thinking it's going to stay small, and then it, it's. I need a bigger <laughs> pot for sure. Yeah, they're very vigorous. Yeah, wow, that is looking good, Connor. And is yours flowered yet, or? Uh, no, but I've been, I've been doing a lot of pruning. Okay. Um, so, 
they like to flower. Oh, no, that's done. That's another leaf. But they flower off their extension. So if yeah. you prune a lot, then you, you slow don't that get process it. down. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Mm -hmm. So check out that pot. Oh, wow. That has got some texture on it, doesn't it? Yeah. It reminds me of a uh, coral reef. Yeah. Yeah. It does. So there's his chop, and I'll, I'll, I'll link it in the. Uh, Okay. In the comments there, Frank. And French is in uh, Quebec, French? Oh, uh, no, France. France. Yeah, okay. so I made uh, an order. Actually, sorry, I gotta show you guys because I know I wanna put this uh, Cascade oh, nice. yeah. uh, Green Island ficus. Yeah. Because I think it will really give you like a seaside yeah. uh, feel with, with the pot, and it's kind of funky pot. Um, kind of matches the gnarly trunk on it, too, yeah. doesn't it? It's kind of. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so still. Uh, a bit big for the the tree, but uh, we'll get there eventually. Yeah, yeah. It might just grow fairly quickly. That's a nice tree, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Very good styling on it. Yeah, I really like it. It's good stuff. Okay.